Good morning, everyone. It's nice to be with you all again. I hope you had a good week. Our mission story for this morning is entitled Prayer Saves Marriage. Our story comes from Gabon. It's about a lady named Angelique. She fell in love with Peter when she was 15 and he was 20. The couple moved in together and had two girls. Life was hard. Peter drank and smoked, but Angelique loved him. When Angelique was 25, Seventh-day Adventist neighbours invited her to evangelistic meetings. She had many questions about the teaching that the seventh day is the Sabbath, and she wasn't satisfied with the evangelist's explanation. On the final Friday of the two-week meetings, the evangelist suggested that she ask her own pastor about the Sabbath. She determined to do just that. Walking home that evening, she met her pastor on the road. Pastor, is Sunday or Saturday the true Sabbath? she asked. The Adventist church says the Sabbath is on Saturday, according to the Bible. The pastor didn't argue with her. What you have been told about the Saturday is the truth, he said. You have learned the truth. Try the Adventist church. Life grew more complicated after Angelique was baptized. She realized that she shouldn't be living with Peter because they were not married. So she asked Peter if they could get married, but he refused. She then asked him to leave the house. He moved across the country to a city 400 kilometers away. Angelique prayed every morning and night that Peter would know Jesus. She even sent Bible studies to Peter by mail. Peter soon ran into trouble. An employer accused him of theft, and even though Peter professed his innocence, he was imprisoned for three months. In prison, he had a lot of time to think. He had nothing to do, so when an Adventist chaplain offered Bible studies, he readily accepted. Shortly before his release, he was baptized. Angelique learned from a friend that Peter was in prison, but she had no idea about the Bible studies. She continued to pray for him every morning and evening. After Peter was released, he called Angelique to tell her about his new faith. Now I understand why you asked me to move out, he said. I am so happy to be an Adventist. Angelique was overjoyed. She still loved Peter. He called frequently to ask about Angelique and their daughters. God worked it out that Angelique had to make a trip to the city where Peter lived, and they agreed to meet again. It had been six years since they had separated. Peter greeted Angelique with a big smile and a warm hug. They had a warm two-hour conversation. Angelique saw that his life really had changed. He wasn't smoking and drinking anymore. He had a sweet disposition. They were able to meet for more conversations and Angelique was able to stay an extra week. That's when Peter proposed. I love you, he said. I miss you. Will you marry me? Angelique happily said yes. That was eight years ago. Today, Peter serves as a church elder and loves Jesus with all his heart. Angelique couldn't be happier. During those darker days, she found hope in Matthew 6 verse 33, where Jesus said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Our first goal should be to seek the kingdom of God. Angelique said, If you are a believer but your spouse isn't, Keep praying because God can work a miracle in the heart. After six years, God answered my prayers. My program this morning is entitled Abide in the Ship. And I would like to start by reading this verse found in the book of Acts. Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Acts 27 verse 31 Paul was on his way to Rome as a prisoner 
and trouble began soon after they left port. The winds being unfavorable, the ship traveled slowly, losing valuable days. By the time they reached Crete, winter was coming on. After all the delays, Paul advised the captain of the ship and the crew to remain where they were and wait for better weather. But they were unwilling to accept his advice and wanted to find a more desirable port to stay for the winter. And it was decided to sail on. The captain was soon sorry that he had done so, for they had not proceeded far with the ship when they ran into a terrible winter storm. He could do nothing but let the ship run before it. The next day the storm became worse and all hope of saving the ship from destruction was lost. They tried to lighten the ship by throwing much of the cargo overboard, but for 14 days the storm raged and the ship drifted helpless and hopeless. The ship was leaking and all their provisions were soaked and spoiled. There were no means of cooking, the utensils had been washed overboard. There was not a moment of rest for any on board. The prisoners and crew were worn out of hunger, weariness, seasickness and fear. Yet in the darkest hour, Paul's heart was stayed on God and he poured forth his earnest supplications on behalf of all the poor souls around him. An angel appeared to Paul to encourage them and said, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Paul's face was alight with courage and hope as he stood before the miserable men and shared the message of comfort with them. What a beautiful promise that was. But there was one condition given for their salvation. They must abide in the ship. Respecting Paul and his God, they all kept to the condition and it did turn out exactly as he said. The ship ran aground on the island of Malta and was broken to pieces by the heavy seas. But all 276 souls escaped safely to land. They were all saved just as Paul had promised. There's another story of a shipwreck that happened many years ago off the coast of the Pacific Northwest. A crowd of fishermen in a nearby village gathered and watched the ship being pounded to pieces on the rocks. A lifeboat was sent to the rescue and after a terrific struggle, they came back with all the shipwreck sailors except one. They were, there was no room in the lifeboat for him, so we told him to stay by the ship and someone would come back for him, they said. Who will come with me, shouted a young man as he sprang into the lifeboat for the return trip. And immediately others joined him. Just then a little lady cried out, Don't go, Jim, my boy, don't go. You are all I have left. Your father drowned in the sea, your brother William sailed away, and we have never heard from him. And now, if you are lost, I'll be left alone. Oh, Jim, please don't go. Jim listened patiently to his mother's pleading. Then he said, Mother, I must go. It is my duty. I must go. They watched as the men in the lifeboat fought their way toward the wreck. Anxiously, Jim's mother wept and prayed. They saw the boat start back, a frail little shell tossed about by the angry waves. At last it came close enough to hear, and they shouted, Did you get him? And Jim shouted back, Yes, and tell mother it's William. Oh, what joy there can be when men do their duty and work together. Just try to imagine the double joy of that mother when she got back not only her brave son Jim, but also her long lost son William. And now we have a third story of a shipwreck. The evening newspaper had the headlines, Wrecked just outside the Golden Gate. 
The Golden Gate is a strait that connects San Francisco Bay to the Pacific Ocean. The ship had lost its way in the fog, became confused with the lights and was wrecked on the seal rocks. May none of us ever be found wrecked just outside the heavenly Golden Gate. Let us stay together, work together, pray together and abide in the ship until Jesus comes. I would like to end off with this encouraging quote found in the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, January 3, 1856, page 112. Let us not be impatient or discouraged and forget that the work is the Lord's. Let us labour faithfully in our several spheres, willingly and meekly bearing the reproach of Christ, striving to enter in at the straight gate. If we are humble and willing to work, we may have a share in the glory that is soon to be revealed. The ship is safe and we shall be safe if we are only on board. Please bow your heads as we close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for being with us today. I pray that you will help each one of us to stay faithful to you and to work for you until you come. In Jesus' name, Amen.